My 69-year-old dad was very healthy going into his bout with pneumonia, and this altered his perception of how sick he was. Our fourth day there, I woke up and he said, Benji, come here. I want my sweatshirt, sweatpants, wallet, and watch. Go get me those four things. I'm walking out of here. I said, Dad, you have a tube in your left lung, a tube in your right lung. You're not going anywhere. My dad had two very good looking nurses. And since I was in the hospital for 17 days, I had plenty of time to craft my messages to them. My female response rate isn't high to begin with, but it's going to be lower when I'm in the hospital wearing soft pants and fleece. In the hospital, you want to wear really soft, comfortable clothes for two reasons. First, you're just kind of laying around, and second, you don't want to bring Ebola back on your lucky brand jeans. My dad was pretty much out of it for over a week, but his mind was sharp as a tack when it came to certain things related to his routine. He's always paid for food when I was with him, and when I was in the hospital, that was no different. When I went out for meals, he would tell me to grab his wallet ahead of time. I ate the shit out of some $10 a pound Wegman salad bar. Wegman's Asian bar, Wegman's Latin bar. After the fourth consecutive day with a new lung tube because his lungs kept collapsing, and after days of moaning in utter pain and gripping the side of the bed in sheer terror, my brother and I played with his pain clicker to make sure that he rested well. We thought that a restful body was a healing body. My brother and I used the timer app on our phones to make sure that we didn't miss any clicks and to make sure he didn't wake up. Until we recalculated our clicks, my dad got a lot of narcotics. Even though I've heard it's intolerable for more than five minutes, my dad had to wear the BiPAP ventilatory assist machine for several days. At night, I would wake up to the whole room exploding in beeps because he fidgeted with his mask, it became unsecured, and his oxygen desaturated. So I'd run over and secure his mask. I'm looking forward to the time when I don't dream of that. My dad had trouble with the huge mask on his face and it changed the way he communicated. Fortunately, his speech has returned to normal, but I find myself really missing the way he talked with the mask. He spoke with drawn out vowels and variation in his pitches, sort of like this. Coke Zero, Coke Zero Cherry, yeah, Coke Zero Ice Chips. Hospital rules are meant to be broken, like wearing gloves and a gown and a mask. I mean, I was living there in the room with him. I'm not gonna wear that stuff. I'm gonna wear my fleece and soft pants. Before my dad was allowed to move around at night, he wore what he called an old man diaper to make it easier to pee. When he was finally allowed to walk to the bathroom, he continued wearing his diaper, I think out of comfort. I remember one time I had to brace him while he peed and his old man diaper fell down. When he finished peeing, I had to pull it back up and tie it together again. My dad left all of the important decisions about his care to me. I decided whether he would get an NG tube or TPN, whether he would be transferred to stay at Centara Northern Virginia Medical Center, in part, whether he would be intubated or stay conscious. It's important that we never regret those decisions we make based on the information we have at hand because that's all we have. That's all we have to work with. Fortunately, I made all the right decisions. Bam! Booyah! I learned a lot about myself in the hospital as well as a lot of new skills. None more critical than bowel control. After each of the four times the doctor threatened to intubate my dad, I didn't poop myself once. All at once, my dad survived many things that could have taken his life, including renal failure, acute respiratory failure, lung-eating pneumonia, holes in his lungs, and sepsis. In part because of how healthy he was before he got sick. Consider my dad's story a lesson. That health is a long-term insurance plan. If my dad didn't take health seriously before he got sick, then he wouldn't be here with me today. When my dad got better, I almost felt a sense of loss. I had dedicated myself to him for so long that I didn't know what to do with my time. How do I just go back to normal after helping to save my dad's life? 
that's why i found this new mission to create terrible videos.